Hello everyone, this is LDP back with you once again for another video. And today I decided I would show off my Nintendo Switch collection. This is something I've wanted to do for several months and today I was like, okay, I'll decide to be motivated today. And here we are. So this is my Nintendo Switch, not the uh, OLED or light or, no, this is the original model. Although um, I don't have Joy-Cons, I have the Hori Split Pad Pro. This is because the Joy-Cons are terrible. Uh, they are just really bad. I recommend, like, first thing you do if you ever buy a Switch, buy the Split Pad Pro. There are definitely trade-offs. No uh, motion control, no HD rumble, uh, no NFC, none of the fancy accoutrement of the... Uh, of the regular Joy-Cons, um, actually you can't even, like, really, like, dock them. You know, you kind of have to, you kind of have to use them in portable mode, which is fine. I, I would rather use something else for the, uh, on, on the TV. And these are kind of cheap feeling, but the trade-off is that they aren't the Joy-Cons. Because even when the Joy-Cons work, barring any sort of, like, Joy-Con drift or anything, they are really not comfortable controllers. The buttons are really small, really cramped, uh, no D-pad whatsoever, as opposed to this, which does have a proper D-pad and a pretty nice one at that. Um, it, it's just, this is just so much better, despite the trade-offs. Uh, I wish they would have made like a more expensive one that included like all the features of the Joy-Con, but I, I, I would have to imagine Nintendo has uh, some some stake in that and would kind of prevent such a thing from existing. Uh, I will say, though, if you want a good controller to use while plugged into the TV, it is recommended to just go first party, get a pro controller. Um, it's $80, which sounds like a lot and is, but I would say it's worth every penny because this is just, in my opinion, the best controller ever made. There is really only one thing I would say is wrong with it, and that's just the, uh, like, the thumbstick and D-pad placement. I, I wish that it was the PlayStation layout over the Xbox layout that they went with. Um, but that, that's not really a, that's not really a, a, a strike against this controller, more so just what I would personally prefer, especially for something like the Switch, which does have a lot of really good kind of retro 2D games that you would want to play with the D-pad as opposed to the thumbstick, not just from third parties, but, you know, the uh, the Nintendo Switch Online, where you can play Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Genesis, all systems that really prioritize the D-pad. Uh, it would be kind of nice if the D-pad was up here and the left thumbstick was here. But, again, just personal preference, not really a ding against the controller, more just my personal taste. And speaking of my personal taste, here are the games. Actually, let's flip the camera. Ah, magic. So, starting off, we have Friday the 13th, with I ha which I have never played. Um, I got it because Tyler sort of uh, talked me into it. I've never played it. Honestly, I'm not really a huge fan of the uh, big, like, multiplayer games anyway. So, yeah, I think I, what I'm going to end up doing... Oh, actually, that's upside down. So, I think I will flip the camera back. Ah, good. Yeah, so, I'm not huge into, like, major, like, online games anyway, with an exception that you'll see later, but... Um... Yeah, I guess I probably should try it at least a little bit, but uh, pretty soon I'm going to need to panic sell this because they are shutting the servers down relatively soon. Um, not extremely soon, like December next year, but, you know, I want to sell it so that I can get something, you know. Um, and beyond that, 
Let's uh, actually move the camera. Meow. We have... Uh, you love uh, the professional quality of uh, my videos. There we go. We have this game, which I actually don't entirely know what it is. Is that uh... yeah I don't remember what that one is I'm sure it's a great game though Capcom oh that's the um I forget the name of the game but it's like the um like the spin-off of uh, Phoenix Wright. Uh, I got it kind of expecting something like Phoenix Wright, and it turns out it plays totally different, which maybe I need to give another try. It, it, it's not, it's probably not bad, it's just different than I was expecting. Uh, speaking of different, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Look, I've tried so many times to be a Zelda fan, I just can't. They're just, they're either just like, hopelessly obtuse to where I just need to just cling to a walkthrough the entire time uh, or they just have some gameplay element that's just super annoying uh, in this case it is the asthma <laughs> I'm pretty sure Link is asthmatic in this game because uh, yeah you like you just like wheeze out of control after taking like 10 steps in the running mode so you aren't allowed to go fast in this game and even so I, I just like I wandered around for a few minutes and I just sort of gave up maybe maybe the asthma mode goes away after a while but I honestly just wasn't invested enough to even see uh here we have Luigi's Mansion 3, another thing that I've tried so hard to get into, and I really just don't like Luigi's Mansion games. Uh, missing here is Metroid Dread. That's because it is currently with my uh, friend's wife, and uh, she's playing it. But we do have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which I, I think every Switch owner kind of has to have this. I... I it is by far the best-selling Switch game, and uh, I, I mean, it's Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. It's the same game as on the Wii U, but uh, with all the courses and DLC unlocked, and now it has you know, entirely new DLC. Yeah, we can still upcharge you. And um, anyway, though, it, it's a fun game. Uh, is it my favorite Mario Kart? Probably not. Um, I would have to crown that to probably double dash but this is still very fun it, it has like you know all everything has built up to mario kart 8 deluxe not to mention the game just looks beautiful uh new super mario brothers u deluxe it's new super mario brothers u deluxe um it's a fun game it, it, it's new super mario brothers how about it uh, here we have, and this is upside down, Octopath Traveler. Uh, this is another, this is another one Tyler, uh, pushed me to get, and this was a much wiser purchase. I had a decent amount of fun with Octopath Traveler. I do need to get back to it at some point. Uh, you know, it's, it's Square Soft, Square Enix, Squeenix, classic JRPG. Really fun. Um, maybe one of these days I'll actually play it on stream. But that's going to be in the very distant future, because I have a lot of other things I need to get to first. Uh, this is Ring Fit Adventure. I've streamed that a couple of times. Really fun game. Genuinely, a, you know, it makes exercising and working out fun, really. And, and I think it does so in a way that really nothing leading up to it has even like we sports or we fit you know like we sports was kind of limited by you know the tech like you know you aren't really getting like a huge exercise with we sports you're just kind of like exercising your arms or 
you know, or or even like we fit, you're kind of just like leaning back and forth, you know, on a little board. This this is like what all of that has been leading up to. It has, you know, the ring con, which is it, it, it kind of requires you to, like, exercise and, like, move your entire body, which I, I think is very nice. Uh, we have Sonic Frontiers, which I kind of started, and uh, I need to maybe give another try. It's just one of those, like, games where I got lost and sort of moved on to something else. I probably should get back to it at some point, though. Uh, is that All-Stars? Yeah, 3D All-Stars. This is the, I, I think this is quite literally the only game I've ever pre-ordered. Um, I'm trying to think about that. Yeah, I think so. That is the only game I've ever pre-ordered. And I did so because I thought these were going to be extremely rare because of the limited uh, exclusivity thing. Um, not really. They're still pretty common a lot of people bought it it's an all right collection you know not a remaster like they were you know some of the leaks were saying but it's super mario 64 which is fun but you can get it on the nso plus now uh super mario sunshine which is honestly just my least favorite mario game ever uh and mario galaxy which is why you buy this collection uh, Smash Brothers Ultimate. I suck at Smash Brothers. Moving on. Uh, and what is this last game? We uh, Nintendo Switch Sports, which I also played on stream and is also very excellent. Uh, the soccer game is good. It has what I think is it. I think it's bowling and tennis from Wii Sports. Um, and then I think they like, and then there's like some other thing. Oh, there's also the sword play thing, but they called it something really archaic. I don't remember what it was called. But those are all of my physical games. Now let's go to the digital ones. And there we go. So we have the screen captured there. Let's go. And my dog is gagging on something. Cool. Persona 5, that's what I'm playing right now, and I am playing uh, quite a bit of it, actually. Can I s no, no, wait, 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 wait. I don't know. I was going to say, is that going to, like... Nah, I don't think it matters if the... Uh... Well, actually, no, it kind of does, because I don't want people to see my friend code. Uh, unless I give it out. But, yeah. Uh, it... It, Persona 5. You know, you know how much I love the Persona games. Very good. Very nice. Tetris 99, another game I've been playing a lot, especially um, since LCX made a uh, really fun stream where he kind of gave, like, some tips on how to get good at Tetris. Um, I've been kind of trying that, and it, it hasn't gotten me to win a match yet, but it has gotten me successfully to, like, you know, the top 30, you know, almost every time, which is nice. Uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, you know, obviously really fun, Switch Online, uh, I have the expansion pack, I'm one of those people, I, 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 I think, to me, this, uh, expansion pack is worth it. Here's the thing, is, like, I will pay, like, even with, um, the expansion pack, it's, what, I think $60 a year? That's not really breaking the bank. I think people really... I think people really kind of overshot the expansion pack. Um, it definitely got a lot better, added more N64 games, more Genesis games. Genesis is still kind of weak, in my opinion. Uh, it added Game Boy Advance, which is kind of limited now, but it's only going to get better. I, I mean, I've been... I've been getting my money's worth just from streaming Metroid Fusion alone. Uh, we got the Genesis Collection. Pretty solid collection. Supposedly the online is terrible. I've never actually tried it. Uh, Castlevania Anniversary Collection. Another good one. 
Uh, we have Tetris Effect, which is another Tetris game on here. So there are technically three different ways to play Tetris. Um, Tetris Effect is really cool. Really nice kind of graphics, uh, really nice art style. And you get classic Tetris, and you can play it online, which I just think is the coolest thing ever, that you can... You know, modern Tetris is objectively better, but classic Tetris is way more difficult. You really have to be a pro to get good at classic Tetris because it doesn't hold your hand. It doesn't have the shadows. It doesn't have the hard drop. It doesn't have, you know, you can't just hold a piece. You just have to, like, do the best with what you have. And that's kind of, I think, a little bit of the fun of classic Tetris and a, and, and a little bit of the bullshit. You know, too. Uh, Legend of Mana. I, I, I've streamed this for like 11 parts. Need I say more? Uh, Nintendo, Famicom, Game Boy. And I do have a Japanese account as well. The, uh... The, uh... That one is American. That one is Japanese. Luigi and uh, Mario. Uh, but yeah, sometimes there are differences. Like the NES has um, uh, the Famicom one has Atlantis no Nazo. NES one doesn't. Um, the Game Boy one instead of so in uh, the uh, in the U.S. the Game Boy launched with Alone in the Dark for Game Boy Color. Here they lo they swapped Alone in the Dark for some crappy Mahjong game. Which, I, I, I just hate to be, you know, a, a Japanese player. You, you, you guys got stiffed. I know you guys like Mahjong, but you got stiffed, dude. Uh, Mario Kart 8. Again, uh, you know, that's a physical one. I already said my opinion on it. Let's go into... Actually... Let's go into the folders. We'll just uh, make it a little easier. Retro. These are mostly just retro game collections. So we got um, Atari. Wait. Persona 5 Royal. Why is that in the... Oh. Okay, never mind. There we go. Atari, 50th anniversary. I streamed this. It's a really fun game. Uh, a really fun collection. I, I, I mean, honestly, just one of the best collections. I, I, I think, like... All of these other ones are really going to have to start stepping up their game. Because this has tons of games, interviews, hidden things, original games. It's it's just... And all for, you know, the price that it's asking. I think it was like... I don't remember if it was $30 or $40, but... It, it's just a steal for what you get. Even if you don't care about, like, any of the extra, you know, interviews and stuff like that... You know, even if you don't care about the old games, you got, you know, like the remastered Haunted House, which is really cool. Um, you got the um, updated, honestly, just Tempest 2000 on the Atari Jaguar is worth the price of admission alone. Because, like, like, even on a decent computer, Jaguar emulation can still be kind of spotty. This just does it spot on. Uh, Atari Flashback. Uh, also a good collection. All depends on how much you like old school Atari 2600 and arcade games, which they can be fun sometimes. Uh, definitely the arcade games, like Centipede. Centipede works really well, actually, because um, if you have it in handheld mode, you can actually use the touch screen uh, in place of a trackball, which works better than you might think. Um Substituting a, tr a touch screen for a trackball works better than you might think. Uh, we have SNK 40th Anniversary Collection. I streamed this. It's good. Uh, Konami Arcade Classics Anniversary Collection. This is mostly space shooters. Um, although, odd choice because it doesn't really fit in with anything else. It has um, Haunted Castle, which is... A pseudo spin-off arcade of uh, Castlevania, where they just made Castlevania more like Ghosts and Goblins, and it's not really that good. Um, but it does have Gradius, or Gradius, or however you pronounce it. It has Salamander, Life Force, however you say it. 
uh, Scramble. It has uh, Nemesis 2, Gradius 2, whatever, um, which is a, a fantastic game that, you know, it did get a Famicom port, but not an NES port, and that's a little bit depressing. Uh, retro game collection. Data East. Um, I got this. It was pretty cheap, and it's not really that good. Um, I was kind of hoping for something better. Arca uh, Capcom Arcade Stadium. This is freemium. I did not honestly buy any of the other extra games. I, I might honestly just delete this uh, after this video. Uh, I played this on stream, uh, one of my early streams. This is Namco Museum. Uh, it's got some good games. Got Dig Dug, got Mappy, got... Um, I think it actually has Splatterhouse on it, which is a really good uh, inclusion. I think it has Rolling Thunder. It's a pretty fun thing. Uh, Pac-Man Museum has a bunch of Pac-Man games. Like, um, it has... I think it has, like, the regular Pac-Man, but it also has, like, uh, it has Pac-Attack, it has Pac-Man 256, which is cool that that, you know, came to a console. Um, actually, that might have came, that might have been playable on, like, the PS3 as well, but it's nice to have it in this collection. I played that a lot when I was on the phone. Uh, we have, and, and, you know, here we have this where you can pay for it and not have a bunch of annoying ads that just totally ruin the game. And this is why I'm not into mobile gaming, because it's just an absolute hellscape of ads and terrible controls and blech. Namco Museum, Volume 1 and Volume 2. Streamed these two. Uh, really good collections. Um, num I, I think it's Volume 2 has um, Gapless, which is... I don't think it was ever actually released, or... I, I, I'm still confused about that. I think it was, like, either released in Japan, or it was developed back in the day, but never released. I don't remember. Um, but it's a really good... I, I, I really think it, like, updates the classic Galaga feel. Um, and also, uh, one of these collections has uh, Splatterhouse Wanpaku Graffiti, which... You know, don't tell Tyre, but, like, I, I don't like Splatterhouse, but I, I kind of like Ron Paku Graffiti. Anyway, uh, we already covered those. But here's the Advanced Collection, which has Aria of Sorrow, worth the price of admission alone, quite frankly. Um, it has Dracula X, which is almost a, an incentive not to buy it. Um, and it has the other, I think, like, two or three... GBA Castlevania games, which are good, but not Aria of Sorrow, so don't bother. Play Aria of Sorrow. Um, we have Abrenbo, Tengu, and Zombie Nation, which are exactly the same game, as far as I can tell. Um, or mostly the same game. It's that... it. You, you've seen it, if you know a thing or two about NES games. It's a weird, like... Uh, side-scrolling space shooter where you play as a zombie's head just wreaking havoc around New York City. It's, it's, it's weird, but it's a really fun game. Uh, and I, I think now, like, the actual card, is, it, it's one of those that's just really, uh, you know, gone up in price. Uh, Darius Cosmic Collection. It's got all the Darius games, or uh, the Darius games, sorry, yeah. It has all the Darius games, uh, da uh, Darius 1, Darius 2, also known as uh, Sagaya. Um, what else was there? I think it has Darius Twin. It, it, it's got a bunch of Darius games. Uh, R-Type, Dimensions, EX. This has um, R-Type and R-Type 2, which are good alone. Um, but you also have the, you also have, um, a button you can push to give them, like, updated graphics, which, honestly, just, like, give it, like, really bright and distracting backgrounds, which I don't really care for, so I just usually turn that off. Um, yeah, Genesis, and we have the, uh, collection of Mana! 
These, this is the first Game Boy Mana game, Secret of Mana, and uh, the original Trials of Mana. Um, I mean, I, I, again, I streamed a lot of Legend of Mana, so you know how I feel about the Mana series. It's pretty good. Uh, Disney Classic Game Collection, Aladdin and Lion King. This also has the Jungle Book, too. But um, it has different ports. It has the... It has the Game Boy version, Genesis, Super Nintendo, um, of all three, I believe. I was going to say it has the NES versions of all three, but I don't think so. I think it's just S SNES, Genesis, and Game Boy. Which, um, especially with Aladdin, because like, all three of those games are pretty different. Uh, Turrican Flashback got Turrican 1, Turrican 2, Super Turrican, Mega Turrican. It's a good collection. It has Rewind, which you're honestly going to want to use because Turrican is pretty brutal. Uh, Dragon Quest, that's the first one. It's the, I think it's the updated uh, Super Nintendo version. Uh, Blizzard Arcade Collection. Uh, it has Rock and Roll Racing. It, it, and this is, this is another one where like you have the originals, but you also have updated versions with, like, improved soundtracks. Like, you have the, uh, like, with Rock and Roll Racing, you have either the option of the Super Nintendo or Genesis, but also an enhanced version that has, uh, it, it has, like, the actual songs, not just, you know, 16-bit Genesis Super Nintendo renditions of it, which, all, all, the fact that it includes all three... I just love rock and roll racing. And the other games are good too, but I just like rock and roll racing. And it also has, like, you know, different developer interviews and stuff like that, which is, it, again, I like rock and roll racing, so that was fun to see. Um, and it's just nice to see, like, that there is a market of other people who enjoy this game that I thought was relatively obscure for a little while. It's nice to see that sort of market show that it exists and they are willing to buy something like this. Doom 1993. Doom 2. Uh, Vasara Collection, which actually I don't remember what that is. I think it was just like really cheap, so I picked it up and I was like, eh, this is probably like old games, but I don't entirely know. Uh, Capcom Beat 'em Up Collection. Really good. It has, like, Knights of the Round, Final Fight, a bunch of stuff like that. Uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Crash uh, Insane Trilogy. I've said a decent amount. I mean, like, honestly, there's just really no reason to go back to the old Crash games anymore because this exists, and it does... It's a very faithful recreation of those games, but with better graphics, better sound, and better controls. Uh, Pac-Man World Repacked. Similar thing. There's really no reason to go back to the original Pac-Man world because this exists and it's just definitively better. Uh, Neo Geo Pocket. I played those on stream. Pretty good collections, except Volume 2 has some games that are not translated into English and kind of need to be because they are pretty text-heavy and sort of reliant on you having at least some understanding of the Japanese language. Uh, Doom 64, probably the best Doom game that I've personally played. Uh, at least the best classic Doom game. Tales of Versaria, I actually need to play more of that. Legend of Mana, need I say more. Uh, oh no, that's the anniversary, uh, advanced collection. No, that was, um, up there was Contra. Yeah, that has um, Contra 1, Super C, Super C, or, um, Super Contra 4, um, or Super Contra 3, rather, um, the Alien Wars, the Game Boy 1, all good games, all classics. Uh, Tie the Tasmanian Tiger, uh, honestly, it's one of those that, like, I saw a bunch of retro rev reviewers really hype up, I played it, and honestly, I didn't think it was all that. Um, Mr. Driller Collection, uh, Drill, uh, 
Drill a uh, Drill Land, rather. Uh, this was originally a GameCube game, only released in Japan, and uh, they translated the text to English, but not the voice, which is weird. I don't know why you would do that. Um, just, uh, honestly, just kind of cheap. Like Namco, you have the money to hire English actors, and you know, I, I guess they just didn't feel like it was worth it. They didn't feel like uh, it was worth it for uh, to to Americans because they feel Americans just don't care about Mr. Driller for some reason. I don't know. I care about it, and I'm pissed. Damn it. Um, that is. SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom, another one that kind of retro reviewers really hyped up. I play it, and I was just like, I don't. I I, I think it's just nostalgia goggles because I didn't really think the game was that good. I mean, I I guess it's better than like some licensed games, but the controls are just really off. And this is the rehydrated version, so it's supposed to have been improved, but it really wasn't. And finally, we have Persona 3 Portable, which I regret buying because they just announced that they're going to do a remake, and Persona 3 Portable is just, quite frankly, just not that good. Uh, they, like, turned it into a point-and-click for some reason. Um, there are benefits uh, to this over the original uh, Shin Megami Tensei Persona 3. Um, mainly, like, you can actually control your party members... Uh, you can actually control your party members directly. You could not do that in the original Persona 3, which sucks. Um, but otherwise, I think I'm just going to wait for the remake and buy that. Uh, these are retro styled. So some of these are uh, like actual retro IPs. Others are... Uh, just retro-styled games, like Pac-Man 99, Tetris 99, uh, Tetris Effect, Puyo Puyo Tetris, which I always thought was a fundamentally bad idea. I decided to buy it anyway, and I was confirmed that it was a fundamentally bad idea. Why would you combine two Tetri uh, puzzle games that play nothing alike? They don't... They are in no way compatible. Uh, Stranger Things, the game... It's pretty fun. Uh, has a retro style, which is nice. Uh, Blaster Master Zero Two. I bought it because it was cheap, and I realized I don't really care that much about Blaster Master. Uh, we have Infernax, which is a really good game. I played quite a bit of this. Uh, the Messenger, which is another really good game. I need to play more of it, but yeah. Uh, Allo's Awakening is a fantastic game. I highly recommend. And, and you can also play it on the NES, which supposedly actually has a couple more features, which is interesting that they decided to do that. But yeah, the NES port of Allo's Awakening, um, Allo's Awakening, is supposedly better. But uh, if you don't have access to an NES or don't know how to download an emulator and play it that way... Uh, you can always buy it on Switch, and I'd, I'd recommend you do so. Uh, Axion Verge. I don't remember what this is, but um, I must have liked it because I have Axion Verge 2 in my uh, wish list, and I need to get... I'm, it keeps going on sale, and I keep wondering why was I interested in this. I don't remember. Uh, Angry Video Game Nerd 1 and 2. Definitive versions of the games. Uh... I played the first one a lot on the 3DS when it was new, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to give this another shot on the Switch. I played it, and it's pretty fun. Uh, it, it definitely could have been a lot worse, honestly. It's uh, This has, like, a super easy mode, too, so it's a little bit easier than the uh, original Steam and 3DS versions. Um, and it has the sequel, which I think was originally only available on Steam, and now it's available here. Undertale, honestly, uh, I, a very hot take. I don't really get Undertale. I don't really like it. Um, I, I don't know. Just like the whole pacifist thing just kind of makes the game boring. I guess you can play 
I guess you can be violent, but then you get the bad ending. I don't know. It's it's just. It, I I guess it's the story, but I don't know. I didn't think the story, at least from what I played, was all that inspire. Uh, was all that, you know, compelling either. Venture Kid. This one was cheap, and it's not bad. Um, I think it was only like a couple bucks on the eShop. Uh. Astellon, Tears of the... Oh, that's a, a demo. Okay. Uh, I guess I didn't like this enough to buy the full version. Gato Roboto. This was another one I think was just like really cheap. It was like, I don't know, two or three bucks on sale. And I got it. And it was pretty fun, to be honest. Uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Look, guys, I think this game is just praised so much because it was delisted. I think it's one of those things where it's like people had it on their Xbox 360. They got sad because it was delisted. Then they relisted it. And then I just like I, I played it personally. I was just like, this doesn't really control all that well. It's not like a very good beat em up. I, I would much rather play, you know, something like Streets of Rage 4 or something. Uh... We have River City Melee. River City Melee match, which is uh, good, but not as good as uh, River City Girls, which I played a decent amount of. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge. I, I played it for the first time on stream. My opinion still kind of stands. I just... I think, like, the graphics look really cheap. Everything else kind of feels cheap. It, it's like... It feels kind of flash. Like, it feels more like a fan game than an actual AAA game by a AAA studio. But it's something from Konami that isn't total ass. So I guess we'll give it a pass. Uh, Streets of Rage 4. I, I already said. It, it, just... Really good game. Arguably better than Streets of Rage 2. And, you know... Streets of Rage 2 is just, like, near perfection, so for me to even consider saying that, just, just, just buy the fucking game. Buy it. Buy it now. They're taking too long. Just buy the game! Okay. Uh, Celeste. Really good game. I, I, I love Celeste. I will always bring up an opportunity, either, whenever, even if it's in somebody else's stream, I will just be like, hey, you should play Celeste. It's really good. Um... You know, it, it's Celeste. It it has a really good story, really good character development. Uh, just, like, it, it's a really fun game. And it kind of, I think, really sort of kick-started the indie movement. This and, like, Undertale and maybe a couple other games, too. But I think really, like, the indie scene was alive, but Celeste just made it explode, really. Sonic Mania, I've given my opinions on this on other people's streams. Sonic Mania is very, very overrated. <sighs> okay, rant time. So, <clears throat> Sonic Mania. Bullshit fucking level design. Like, you'll, like, you know, you'll go fast, you'll hit a spring, and then all of a sudden you'll just get pff, bounced back into spikes. It's just... Why would they do... And, and there were multiple times where that happened in-game. And, you know... Honestly, just the other thing, too, is it's just emblematic of the entire Sonic fan base. They'll play a game like Sonic Generations, which I believe is way better. Honestly, kind of what Sonic Mania should have been. Sort of like a... Sort of like a love letter to the past. Or even Sonic 4, I would say, is better than Mania. But they just don't like the graphics. It's not exactly what I grew up with, so therefore it's a piece of garbage. But I'll play Sonic Mania. It doesn't matter if the level design is bullshit. I'll play it. You know? And this is the best Sonic game. This is better than Sonic 2. This is better than Sonic 3. This is better... Sonic fan base, man. Rant over. Uh, Crash Bandicoot 4. If you like the first three Crash Bandicoot games, this is more of the same. 
excellent. Highly recommended. Um, I believe it's in the same engine as the Insane Trilogy, too. So if you already bought that, um, you know, you have a reason to play Crash 4, honestly. If you like the Insane Trilogy, buy Crash 4. Super Lucky's World, uh, or Super Lucky's Tale. New Super Lucky's Tale, rather. I, I, was there an old Super Lucky's Tale? I don't know. Um, really fun. Uh, a love letter to kind of the old, uh, like, N64 GameCube era collectathon 3D platformers. And it does it pretty well, uh, all things considered. Uh, really nice. Uh, we have Pad in Time. Uh, I was recommended this by uh, Second Opinion Games. He was talking about, like, this is the best Wii U eShop title. And I decided, yeah, you know what? I'll try it out on Switch. And I, I, I liked it. I thought it was all right. Maybe he was hyping it a little bit too much, but I, I thought it was fine. We have Cruise and Blast, which is amazing. I love the old Cruise and USA game. Um, and Cruise and Blast just, like, turns it up to 11, really. Um, you can do, like, flips. You have power-ups. It, it's just it's just fun, stupid arcade fun. And, 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 and if, if you're a fan of just, you know, fun, stupid arcade fun, buy it. It goes on sale pretty often. Uh, The Takeover, another fun retro uh, NES-style platformer. Uh, Super Cyborg, again, uh, sort of, I, I think it's like a platformer, if I remember right. Um, yeah, those are all the Japanese NSO. Uh, I already mentioned that. Um... Mario Party Superstars. I bought it and I have never played it. Um, I, I guess I'm just waiting for like a stream to check it out because I'm not going to play Mario Party single player. What do I look like? Uh, these are all Nintendo first party games, by the way. Uh, Super Mario Maker 2. Really fun. Really fun game. Uh, really kind of makes Mario Maker 1 just kind of feel obsolete by comparison. The thing with Mario Maker 1, I have that, and I played it on the Wii U, and I think Nintendo has kind of, like, said, like, has kind of, like, their, their algorithm has, like, made it so it doesn't prioritize as much the auto-runner levels, which I thought really just ruins the game a lot of the time. You'll be like, oh, here's this auto-runner level, or here's this level with just, like, not a lot of and it also has like pre-made levels too which is really good because it sort of gives a template of like okay this is okay idiots this is what you should do with a mario maker level and i think that those two things really help the game feel a lot better i've not made a single level in this um and i probably never will because i just do not have the patience for it but even if you are like me uh you're gonna have a lot of fun just like going online and playing other people's Mario Maker levels, whether it's just, you know, the 99 Live thing or, you know, just some YouTuber or streamer's custom level. It, it, you can do a lot with Mario Maker. Uh, Super Mario 3D World Plus Bowser's Fury. Bowser's Fury... Uh, I didn't really care for it's uh, it's like an open world Mario game and I, I don't really know how well that worked but uh, 3d world uh, definitely one of the better games on the Wii U on the switch it's even better because it's it's faster it um, it has like some extra features it's just really nice uh, Super Mario Odyssey. I've said it before, this is, in my opinion, the best 3D platformer of all time. Uh, definitely the best Mario game, but arguably the best 3D platformer of all time. It just does everything right. This is, uh, this is what Super Mario 64 should have been and could have been if the technology was there. It's just, just buy it, buy it. I, I don't care if you have to 
like buy it online, buy it physically, buy it metaphorically, just buy it. Um, yeah, Paper Mario uh, Origami King. It's one of the better modern Paper Mario games. Uh, doesn't make it all that great. Um, you know, it, it, it's fine. Uh, let's see, I already talked about Skyward Sword, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. I got fairly far in it. It's a really good remake of the game. Um, definitely, I, I would say, better than the original. Uh, has a really nice kind of unique art style to make it stand out. Try it out. Link's Awakening, uh... I guess it's just called Link's Awakening. I thought it was like Link's Awakening HD or Link's Awakening DX. I don't know. Uh, Splatoon 2! Had a lot of fun with the game. I have the demo of Splatoon 3. Didn't really play it. I used to play Splatoon a lot more, uh, when I was with my old, uh, ex-girlfriend. She was super into Splatoon 2. Uh, whenever we split, I kind of just, like, associate the game with her, so. Yeah. Uh, we got Box Boy and Box Girl, fun puzzle platformer, Clubhouse Games, uh, 51, Worldwide Classics. Definitely a fun way to, like, check out games that might not have been, like, you can play, like, Hanafuda, which, you know, the really fun way to kind of go full circle especially for nintendo because that's kind of how they started oh no no i don't want to quit persona no get out of here god i would never quit persona i can't quit persona uh rpgs we have the great oh that's what it was the great ace attorney chronicles yeah uh, we have Buck Fables, which is like Paper Mario done right. Take notes, Nintendo. Uh, we have we have the collection of Mana. I, oh yeah, I already mentioned that. Uh, Trials of Mana. I played a little bit of it. Honestly, I kind of got lost. Uh, live Alive demo. I haven't actually played that yet. I need to. Because I, I see the game go on sale every so often. And I should actually check if it's worth it. Uh, we have... Let's see, we looked at that. Undertale? That's not an art... Actually, I guess it is. Um, Nino Kuni. Really fun game. Uh, really nice kind of... I don't remember if it's actually Studio Ghibli or Studio Ghibli inspired, but... It, really nice animation, pretty fun story. Nino Cooney, check it out. Uh, we have Celeste full or uh, Catherine full body rather. Uh, another Atlas game, very, uh, very. Um, I believe it is. Is it technically part of the Shimigami Tensei? I don't remember. It doesn't have that anywhere in the name, but definitely very Shimigami Tensei esque. We have uh, Shimigami Tensei Five, which actually, um, I think I might have given that to my friend, because um, I didn't really, I, I kind of bought it expecting something like Persona, and it turned out to be like way more open world than Persona, which I didn't personally really care for. We have uh, South Park, the, Stri uh, the Stick of Truth, and South Park Fractured But Whole. Um, pretty fun, honestly, uh, for especially like more fun than you would think for you know licensed cash in games especially like the south park games in the past like the n64 ones were just total garbage these are actually you know games that you would enjoy playing and uh many people have uh the witcher uh complete edition that's another one i think i gave to my friend but i used to have that on card as well uh casual we have Box Boy. What do we have? What have we not uh, touched on? Oh, Monopoly. Guess what, guys? It's Monopoly. Uh, Jeopardy. I'm always a Jeopardy fan. This version kind of sucks. Um, really, like, basic, almost like Microsoft PowerPoint graphics. 
Um, but I mean, you know, I guess it plays like Jeopardy, and it. It's online, even though that experience is kind of broken, too. But not as broken as Family Feud. Oh, such a missed opportunity. The online on this is just broken. It's so bad. And speaking of broken, Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga. Look, I don't know if all the versions are like this, but... And maybe they updated this uh, since I last played it. But when I played it, it was... There were... This is, like, the only game I think I've ever played where, like, I've had game-breaking glitches so bad that I literally had to quit out of the game and reset it. Um, actually, no, uh, I, I'm wrong. It was the uh, SNK 40 event. But I think at that point I just had, like, a crappy SD card, and that's kind of why. But, yeah, um... Play it on anything that isn't the Switch. Maybe they fixed it, though, so don't actually listen to me. Uh, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. I bought it because I think Omega was playing it a lot, or somebody was playing it a lot, or something like that. And then I remembered, oh, yeah, I don't like Crash Team Racing because it's just... I don't know. I, I don't remember if it's, like, how it controls, or really just... I think it's just, like, the level layouts, really. It's just very... You have to do a lot of really quick, sharp turns, and that's just not fun. We have the hardcore games, like Dead Cells, which I've barely played. Friday the 13th, which I've never played. And Doom, which I've also barely played. And The Witcher, which I've also barely played. Okay. And we have Roguelikes, which I don't really care for. Um... As you can see, I've not, I actually don't have any of these on my console, but we have a uh, Mana Spark, we have this Gia and Complete Demo, we have Children of Manta, and we have Hades. Uh, we have Wonder, Bo uh, Wonder Boy, the Dragon Trap, which... Why is that? Oh, yeah, it's in platformers. That's right. Um, yeah, it, it's a platformer. Actually, that should be in retro styled, I think. Actually, I guess not, because really, it, like, it's it's based on an old IP, but it's not really retro styled. Um, Freedom Planet. Actually, I don't know what that is, but it's the demo, so I guess I haven't played much of it. Axion Verge. Uh, uh, Infernax, Super Cyborg. I think all of this I've shown off in some form or another already. Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, if you see a game that I didn't show off, sound off in the comments. Or don't, I don't really... Oh, there's Metroid Dread. There we go. And uh, there's also Little Nightmares, which I think Eugene was playing at some point. And uh, I downloaded the demo and apparently didn't really like it because I didn't buy the full version. Uh, there's Sonic Frontiers. Yeah, that's everything, I think. Okay. Yeah, okay. So... That is my Switch collection. And if you stay to the end, I'm sorry, you get absolutely nothing. That's just how the world works sometimes. Oh well. Good night, and thank you for coming to my TED Talk.